Okay, this is lesson 30, section 5.4, uh, Solving Right Triangles, part 2. And in this part, we get into the practical application side of uh, working with these problems. So, uh, in here, first we need to uh, talk about the angles of elevation and depression. The angle of elevation is where you're at a point, let's Let's say that this is a, a person's eye right here. And the uh, angle of elevation is always relative to the horizontal, horizontal to the ground, uh, parallel to the ground, so to speak. And then the line of sight to whatever object you're looking at or the angle is in relative to. So you get this angle here, uh, known as the angle of elevation. Now the angle of depression, that one can tend to be tricky because here with the um, angle of elevation, you get this triangle here. And so theta is inside the triangle. But with the angle of depression, normally uh, the angle is not always inside the triangle. So you have to be careful here in that you have to look at this in terms of two parallel lines cut by a transversal alternate interior angles are congruent. So you have to be particularly careful with the angle of depression because most times it's not in the triangle. Now it kind of looks that way with this but uh, you'll see when we work through the problems, it's not always that way. So, and that's what this says here, is you want to be careful with the angle of depression. Because the angle of elevation and angle of depression are measured between lines of sight and the horizontal line. And so you have to look at you know, is it inside the triangle or is it outside the triangle that we're, we're working with? And so, with angle of depression, you get that um, the line of sight between the horizontal and you may have to interpret using parallel lines cut by transversal. You have that alternate interior angles to get that angle inside the triangle. So you want to draw a picture and uh, you want to label it, you know, you want to put your values in there. You know, are you 30 feet, are you 200 miles, you know, what, what are your values that you're going to put here in the triangle? Use the sketch to write an equation and then solve the equation. And you always want to see where is your angle that you're working with. That's really important. Okay, here we have um, Pat um, knows that when he stands 123 feet, okay, so here's the 100, 123 feet from Pat to the flagpole, the base of the flagpole is 123 feet. Uh, the angle of elevation from her eye to the top, and here's that line of sight that I was telling you about and that's always going to be the hypotenuse of the triangle. Uh, it's 26 degrees uh, 40 minutes. If her eyes are 5.3 feet above, okay, so you have to take that into account at the end. Notice that 5.3 feet is outside the triangle, so we don't account for this yet until the end above the ground, find the height of the flagpole, all right, A. So, here we have our 
our base, right, 123 feet, we have our angle, and we have our opposite side. So from here, which uh, trigonometric uh, ratio are we going to use? Are we going to use sine, cosine, or tangent? Anybody? So if we wanted to draw the, the triangle again, here we have, draw a little bit straighter sides. Here's our 26 degrees, 40 minutes. Here's our 123, and here's our side A. And then we also have that additional height that we have to add at the end. Okay, and this is our, we have our flagpole, right? It's going to be A, the height of our flagpole is going to be A, the height is going to be A plus the 5.3 at the end. So, I'll keep that in black. Okay, so which one are we going to use, sine, cosine, or tangent? Anybody? Dylan, you want to give a shot? Tangent, tangent good. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, right, for our ratio. So this is tangent of 26 degrees, 40 minutes, is equal to what? Um, Travis? Good. A over 123. All right. So, uh, uh, Sydney, what do we do at this point? Right. Multiply both sides by 123. So this would be 123 tangent, 26 degrees, 40 minutes, equals 2A. All right, well, let's see what that looks like on the calculator. So, oh, that's right. We've got 123 tangent, 26 degrees, go to second and angle, and enter, and that was uh, 40 uh, minutes, and then angle again, 2. Okay, we get 61.7729, right? But is that our answer? Well, if we look, If we go back, 61.77, that's this, right? But what else do we have to do? I mean, is that it? Is that the height of our flagpole? Now keep in mind our, our flagpole is from her height, right, and then the height of the triangle. So what else uh, do we need to do? Add 5.3. Right, add 5.3 to that. So that's 61.77 plus 5.3. And so we'll, um, Let's see, they want, do they tell us what they round it, wanted us to round it to? I don't see. So we'll say that's um, 67.07 feet. Okay, now,
Okay, they rounded 60, um, they went ahead and rounded that 61.8 to uh, 77 to 61.77. They went ahead and rounded it to 61.8 and then added 5.3 to that. Um, now they didn't, they weren't specific as far as rounding it to the nearest tenth, but uh, they did that in this case. All right, questions with that? Okay, now here we have an angle of depression from the top of a 210 foot cliff. Here's our cliff. David observes a lighthouse that is 450 feet offshore. So here's the cliff, and there's a lighthouse 450 feet away. Find the angle of depression from the top of the cliff to the base of the lighthouse. If the angle of depression is measured from a horizontal line down the base of the lighthouse, the angle of depression would be right angle. Shown alternate interior angles whose measure is equal, we use the tangent ratio. Okay, so, I mean, there's a couple of ways that you could have solved this, but visually, the best way to solve it, normally, we're used to working with, we're not used, we're not normally used to working with a triangle that's upside down like this. Visually, we're more used to working with a triangle that's like, you know, with the base on the bottom. Well, the problem with this is that this is our angle of depression here. This is 430 uh, feet and 210 feet. Well, the problem that people have with this is they want to look at this. They somehow, they, they put the theta here, which is not. Here, this is what I was telling you about. Theta is actually outside of the triangle. But with alternate, let me draw this big, a little bit larger. Alternate interior angles inside interior of two parallel lines cut by transversal alternate interior angles are congruent. So if this angle is theta, this angle is also theta. So in this case, uh, Harley, what would we do, what ratio would we use, sine, cosine, or tangent, to uh, find theta? Well, here's, remember this. We have sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, here's opposite side, right? Here's adjacent side, here's the hypotenuse. So which uh, ratio would you use? Well, sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, but we don't, we don't have a hypotenuse, so we couldn't use sine. Tangent. Yeah, tangent. So this would be tangent. Move this over a little bit. Tangent theta equals to 210. I'll give myself some room here. 210 over 430. Okay? But now what are we going to do, uh, Sydney, to find angle theta? Well, somehow we got to get this tangent over to the other side. What would we, we don't need, what? No, not divide. We have to use. 
Yeah, we have to use the inverse tangent. Good. That's what you were thinking, right? Inverse tangent. Okay, that's right. So we apply inverse tangent to both sides. Okay, so that's inverse tangent of 210 over 430. So let's see what that looks like on the calculator. Let me see if I can do this without having to... No. Okay, now again, you always want to make sure that your mode is in what? Radians or degrees? Which one is it? For what we're doing, we always want to make sure we're in degrees, right. Good idea to check that. All right, so we're going to hit second inverse tangent. <coughs> and so that's going to be uh, 210 divided by uh, fourth, uh, 430. Okay, and hit enter. Okay, and we get 26 degrees. All right, questions with that? And that's what we did here. <coughs> okay. Questions. So on this, here's the angle of depression, right? So we put the, the angle of depression is the same for alternate interior angles. And this would be our triangle. So you have to be careful with the angle of depression because for all the problems that we're working with, and, or uh, most of the problems, you have to look at in terms of is that angle inside the triangle or outside. Now you could have used this triangle here, but if you do that, then this would be 210 and this would be 430. So either case, you're going to have to move something, whether it be the sides or the, the angle. So, you know, you may want to just use the alternate interior angles. All right, questions with that? <coughs> okay, here we have a um, subtense bar method is a method that surveyors use to determine distance between two points. And here we have a subtense bar here um, with length B. So this, in, this whole length here, this whole length here is length B. So half of it would be B over 2. Um, the subtense bar with length B is centered at point uh, Q. Here's point Q and uh, situated perpendicular to the line of sight between P and Q. Okay, so this dotted line here, that's the line of sight. So here's uh, angle theta, and that's 1 degree, 23 minutes, 12 seconds. So with that, that comes out to exactly 2 centimeters, or where B and B is 2 centimeters. So if B is 2 centimeters, then B over 2 would be what? If this whole side were 2 centimeters, then, then half of it would be wh how many centimeters? 1, right. And here we have angle theta is 1 degree, 23 minutes, 12 seconds. So basically, this line is bisecting that angle. Okay, so we go ahead and convert that to a decimal. So that would be 1 degree plus 23 over 60, right, because this would be 23 degrees 
plus one degree over 60 minutes, and then 12 over 3600, and we 3600 uh, minutes, and we get 1.386667. So that's our angle as a decimal. And so from there, we can use uh, angle D, or D is going to, side D here is going to be 2 over 2, which is 1, cotangent of 1.38667 over 2. So basically all we're doing is we're taking this angle and dividing it by 2 because that's, that's half of that angle. And we get 82.63110 centimeters. So, so we're looking for this distance here. All right. Any questions with that? All right, let's take a look at uh, some problems. All right, here we have a fire truck ladder is leaning against a wall. So here's our ladder. So to redraw this picture, we have this fire truck. And here's a building. And this ladder goes a certain height up, we'll draw the building higher. It goes a certain height up the building. So we have a 13.5 uh, meter fire truck ladder. So this is our ladder, it's 13.5 meters. It's leaning against a wall. Find the distance D, the ladder goes up. So we're trying to find that distance there. Find the distance D, the ladder goes up the wall above the fire truck if the ladder makes an angle of 33, 35 degrees 29 minutes. With the horizontal. Okay. Since we just want how high the ladder goes up in rel relation to the truck, we don't need to determine, find out what this is here, the, the height of the truck, because we only want this distance here. All right, so with that, find the, the distance the ladder goes up in relation to the, the top of the truck. All right, go ahead and do that. And uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes to uh, work on that.
Okay, anybody get uh, an answer? Uh, Travis, why don't you go ahead and... Right. So we'll go ahead and round that to 7.8. And we're working in meters. Okay, 7.8 meters. All right, questions with that? Okay, good. All right. From a window 33 feet above the street. So we have this window, and that's 33 feet above the street. The angle of elevation to the top of the building across the street is 54 degrees. So this angle right here is our angle of elevation, 54 degrees. And the angle of depression to the base of the building is 16 degrees. Okay, find the height of the building across the street. Okay, so here they gave us two angles. They're not being bisected, so you don't have to do that division like we'd had to do in that other problem. All right, so if we were to redraw this triangle, this is what we, we want to find this height. So in this case, From the window, from a window 30 feet, 3 feet above the street, the angle of elevation at the top of the building across the street is 54 degrees, and the angle of depression at the base of the building is 16 degrees. Find the height of the building across the street. Okay, so this is what we've got. We've got point here. We've got 54 degrees, and we've got 16 degrees, all right? And we know that this height here is 33 feet, okay? Well, what can we do? It looks like we all, you know, we only have two, two angles. We don't have any sides, but in reality, we do. What, what can we do at this point? Uh, Travis? Okay, but we have this 33 feet. What, what, what can we do with that? Yeah, that's good. If this is 33 feet, this side here is also 33 feet. Okay, so if we wanted to find this, the, hy the hypotenuse, I mean the uh, height of our triangle, okay, then But well, we need to find this whole distance here, right? Well, we only have the 33. Well, how can we find that? Well, it helps to see what is common to both triangles. If we can find what's common to both triangles, maybe we can use that to help us uh, solve the problem. So, uh, Sydney, what would what, what could we uh, say that would what would be common to both triangles? Well, is it this side here, or is it the height h? 
H, right? H is common to both. So if we can find H, then we can find this side, and if we find this side, then we can find X, okay? So how do we find, the question now is how do we find H? Well, what is 33? Is that side opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse? Harley? Opposite, good. So 33, that's the opposite side. What would H be? Travis? Adjacent side, good. So if we've got opposite and we want adjacent, which uh, trig ratio would we use, sine, cosine, or tangent? Tangent, right. So that would be tangent, 16 degrees equals to opposite is 33 over hypotenuse. Uh, adjacent, rather, which would be H. All right, well, now what? <coughs> Travis? Good. Multiply both sides times H. Okay, so we've got H tangent, 16 degrees equals to 33. All right, then what? Um. Well, you're only, you would only use inverse tangent if you're trying to get the angle where you have the two values on the opposite side, but you don't have the angle. Well, here we have the angle. So we're not going to use, because our, our angle is 16 degrees, right? So we don't, we don't need to find an angle. We have that. So we have to do some other operation. Divide, right. Divide both sides by tangent, 16. Divide by tangent, 16. Okay, and we get H equals to, and now we take 33 divided by tangent, uh, 16. Okay, so that would be 33 divided by tangent, 16 degrees, and we get 115. 0 0.08, 4, 6, 7, and it goes on, right? But, all right, now let me show you something on the calculator. We'll come back to this. Okay, so we took 33 divided by tangent, 16 degrees. All right, we got 115.08 and it goes on. Okay? So now we want so that's this, right? 115. Basically 115 here. Okay, now we want X. Okay, so now what do we do? Uh, Sydney? We have this side, right? It's 115. We have this angle here. We need X. Tangent again, that's right. So this would be tangent. Uh, what and that would be 54 degrees, right? Equals to x over 115.084, and it goes on. Now we're going to keep that in the calculator. We're not going to clear that because we're going to use that. Now all we have to do is multiply 115, right? Dot 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 to both sides. And so we get x equals 115.08, right? And it goes on times tangent 54 degrees. So let's see what that looks like on the calculator. So we have our 115 already, right? 
So all we have to do to call that back is you can just hit times and it puts the answer on from the previous. But it only does the previous. It can only, you can only do that from the previous. So in other words, if you did something else and went back to it, it won't work. You have to go back and do it again. You can do that or hit second and answer. That's another way to do it. But we just hit times and brought it up. Answer times tangent of 54 degrees. So that's an exact figure right there. You didn't round it off or anything. So I like to do that because this is, even though this shows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven decimal places, the calculator also actually internally actually goes out to, to 15 decimal places. So this is, the, this is the most accurate number answer you're going to get on a, on a TI-84, 158.4. All right, and so our, but the question now is, so we know this is one, what did I say that was? Now I'm trying to, we said that was 158.4. All right, so this is 158.4, but is that, let's see, if, is that our answer? Well, what, did, what was it that we're trying to get? Find the height of the building. So is that the height of the building? No, it's not. So what else do we have to do? So we get 158. Point four, but what else do we have to do? Travis? Add 33. Add 33, right. Okay, so that'd be point 0.4, and so that would be 11, 6, Okay, so the height of the building is 191.4, let's see, round the nearest whole number. So that would just be 191. Okay, oops, that looks like a 19, 191. Okay, questions with that? see what this one looks like. Like the base of isosceles triangle is 39.86 inches. Each base is, base angle is 37.24. Find the length of each of the two equal sides of the triangle. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to picture what this looks like. Okay, the length of the base of an isosceles triangle is 39.86. So let's draw the base first, first. 39.86. Each base angle is 37.24. So this is an isosceles triangle. So each base angle is 37.24 degrees. Find the length of each of the two equal sides of the triangle. Okay, so we need to find the length of each of the two equal sides. Well, how are we going to do that? This almost doesn't look like a triangle here, so there we go, that's a little better. All right, now what? I'll give you a hint. We got to draw something in there that's not there already. Well, we're used, we're working with right triangles, right? 
So how can we make a right triangle here? Well, this is an isosceles. All right, so Annette, we have two equal angles here. So if we were to draw, since these two angles are equal, then this height right here is going to bisect this angle. If it bisects this angle, then it bisects the base. So that makes that means that this side here is how long? Well, how can we find that? Since these two angles are equal, then this height is going to bisect that angle. If it bisects that angle, it's going to bisect the base. So if the base is bisected, then this side here would have to be what in relation to 39.86? Dylan? Well, what, what would we if we bisect something, right? Like if something's 10 feet and we bisect it, now it's no longer 10 feet, but it's in the two equal parts. So that would make it how many feet? We took 10 feet, bisected it. Now each segment is five feet, right? So, since this base is bisected, then this 39.86, we would have to divide that by what? To divide it by by 2, right? And that would give us 19.93. Well, if that's 19.93, the other side is 19.93 as well. Since, so if we found this x, we would know what this x is here. Okay? All right, so actually, we could, from what we know now, we could go ahead and find what side x is by using which uh, trigonometric uh, ratio? Uh, Sydney? Sine, cosine, or tangent? Well, now tangents, here's our Sokotoa, right? Tangent is opposite over adj adjacent, but we want is x. Sine? Cosine, right. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. That's good. Cosine of 37.24 equals to what's going to go in the numerator? Um, Harley? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, which side is the adjacent side? Right, 19.93 over x. All right, now what? Travis? Right, multiply both sides times x, and we get x cosine 37.24 equals to 19.93. And then now what are we going to do? Uh, Harley? 
Good. Divide by cosine 37.24. Divide cosine 37.24. And we get uh, our side x is going to be 90.93 divided by cosine 37.24. And we get 25. Round answered, oh, rounded to the nearest hundredth if needed. So this is 25.0343, and it goes on. But we want to round that to the nearest hundredth, so we've got to go look at one more, right? So that would make it x is approximately equal to 25 point what? Zero. 3 or 0, 4? Harley? Right, 0, 3. Okay, and that's our answer. Questions with that? All right. Let's see. Okay, now here we have the base of a pyramid is a square with side 600 feet. So here's a base side, here's a base side. So our, our pyramid is 600 feet with a square ba base to it. The height of the pyramid is 500 feet. So it's been a while since I've had to draw a pyramid. I'll give it a shot here. So it actually looks more like so this is our height right here of the pyramid, okay? And we said that's 500 feet. Our base, each side is 600 feet. Find the angle of elevation of the edge to indicate the figure to two significant digits. So we want that angle right there, angle of elevation. Base of the triangle of the figure is half the diagonal of the square base of the pyramid. Okay, so if this is this is six hundred, this is six hundred, but from here to here, what well, what we're looking at here is this triangle. This base, here's 500, that's our height. This distance here, if this is 600, this would be half of that, which would be what? 300. So that, if that's 300, this is 300. And so, I know it's kind of hard to see this, but you're actually drawing this triangle right here, okay? And this side here is perpendicular to the base. So can, can you see that visually, the blue? You're, you're actually looking at it as a three-dimensional figure. So we want this angle right here. We want this angle right here. Okay, and the hardest part of this problem is really just seeing it, trying to picture it from visually from, because we're normally used to seeing two-dimensional objects. Well, this is three-dimensional. Okay, so uh, Harley, what, what do we do now to, uh, what trig ratio would we use? 
sine, cosine, or tangent. Tangent, good. Tangent, we don't know what theta is, right? That's what we're trying to find. And since tangent is opposite over adjacent, this would be what? Um, Travis? 500 over, 500 over 300, but we can reduce that, right? These two zeros cross out, these two zeros cross out. So basically, what we're looking at is just 5 over 3. Okay, well, we don't know what the angle is, so what do we do now? Dylan? Inverse. Right, apply inverse tangent, because we don't know what the angle is. So anytime we don't know what the angle is, we use the inverse. All right, so <coughs> this is going to be inverse tangent. 5 over 3. And we get 59.0326. Uh, dot, 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 and it goes on. Round to the nearest degree. So this would be rounded off to just 59 degrees. All right, questions with that? Okay, I'm glad we went over that one. I think uh, you guys should be okay with that. Um, um, hmm. Suppose that you are headed towards a plateau. 43 meters high. All right. Let's, tr let's look at this one. It says here, suppose that you are headed towards a plateau that's 46 meters high. Okay. So here's 46 meters high, and we're going towards that. Okay. The angle of elevation to the, uh, to the top of the plateau is 30 degrees. Okay, how far are you from the base of the plateau? Okay, now if they don't give you a height of the person, then you just disregard that. Okay, you, that's not something that you would have to try to figure out. All right, so how far are you? All right, so go ahead and, and try to figure that out. Okay, so Travis, what uh, would you use here? Tangent, good. Tangent of 30 degrees equals to 46 over, we'll call this x. Okay, and then we apply, multiply x to both sides, right? And we've got tangent, 30 degrees, equals to 46. Now, they don't ask for a, an exact number here. If they did, then you'd have to find what tangent at 30 degrees is, since it's a special angle. But they don't ask for it. They want you to round it to two decimal places, so we could just use the calculator. And then divide by tangent, 30. Tangent 30 degrees. So x is going to equal what? Anybody um, get that one? Seven 
Right. 79.67433, and it goes on, right? But since we're rounding it to two decimal places, it just rounds off to 79.67 meters. Okay? Questions with that? All right. A company safety committee has recommended that a floodlight be mounted um, to a parking lot so that illuminates the em employee exit. Find the angle of depression of the light to the nearest minute. Well, they were nice enough to uh, give you angle of depression here. So this is what we're looking for, angle of depression right here. Okay. Safety committee has recommended floodlight mount in a parking lot so as to illuminate the employee exit, find the angle of depression. So they didn't give you, and they wanted in degrees and minutes. So they went ahead, they didn't write it out here, but they wrote that the height of the floodlight is to be 39.26 feet, and the distance from where the lamp is mounted out to the edge of the, to like this door, there's a door here. You, you may not be able to see it from where you're sitting, but there's a door here. So it's 51.26 feet from where the light's mounted to the door. Okay, so we have 51.26 feet for the base, 39.26 feet for the height, and we want the angle of depression. All right, go ahead and figure that out. All right, go ahead and do that. I'll, I'll redraw it in case you can't, you're having a hard time seeing it. This is 51.62. This is 39.26. This is the angle of elevation. And we want the angle of depression. Okay, anybody come up with uh, the angle? Well, the problem here is the angle of depression is outside the triangle, right? But what's equivalent to that? Well, remember our alternate interior angles between two parallel lines cut by transversal is what? The same measure, right, or they're congruent. So if this is angle theta here, our angle of depression, where else can we say our angle theta is? A, B, or angle C? Sydney? Angle A, right. So our angle of elevation is also is equivalent to the angle of depression. So if we can find this angle here, then we can find our angle of depression. 
Okay, so what ratio would we use here? Sydney? Tangent, good. Tangent theta equals to Harley. What would our values be? Right, 39.26 over 51.62. All right, so far so good. Now what? Good, inverse tangent. Inverse tangent. So we apply inverse tangent, 39.26 over 51.62, and we get angle theta equals what? Travis? Uh, okay. 37 degrees. Yeah, because that's going to be 37.255, you know, and that goes on, right? So we've got to um, take that 37 degrees plus 2.255 and we're going to multiply that, right, times 60, because this would be degrees, 60, 60 minutes over 1 degree. So we're going to multiply 60. Right, that'd be times. I got. All right, we get, so we just want degrees and minutes. So we get 37 degrees, and what did you get for minutes? 15. 15. Yeah, I got 15.3, but they just want minutes, so we just drop that and put 37 degrees, 15 minutes. Okay, very good. Questions with that? All right, awesome. Um, Tower that is 105 feet tall, cast a shadow 107 feet. Find the angle of elevation that you should have no problem with. And um, the altitude of a mountain peak is measured as shown as a figure than altitude 14,500 feet. And the difference in the mountain straight line distance of the peak of mountain. Uh, Okay, I don't, th I don't think you guys are going to have any trouble with that one either. Okay, it's basically the same as one of the other ones we've done. Okay, any questions at all? All right. 